please welcome IBM fellow, Irene Grief. Hello. I, I thought the toughest part of this talk would be fitting it in 10 minutes, but I think it's uh, fitting it in after these uh, amazing speakers who came before me. And also, they're giving me nine minutes. Uh, I'm here to tell you about Many Eyes. Uh, it's a, a visualization system, interactive visualizations, with a lot of support for collaboration. We believe that people um, can understand data better when we scale up the audience, even more important than scaling the data, so that people can work together on it, look at it together, uh, and, and come to a deeper understanding of it. Um, we know the visual uh, display of information has a lot of impact. We see it all the time. We see it in print and internet media. And we know, as Yogi Berra once said, you can observe a lot by just watching. So many people do just watch. But what we believe is that there's actually a pent up desire to analyze, to have your own control and ways of looking, often at your own data, and sometimes at other data, because the way somebody else chose to display it may be a deliberate attempt to make a particular message. You may find out something different if you can look at it differently. So uh, all that we think is needed, and this is one of the things we're learning from many eyes, is it is the case. There's a pent up desire to analyze. You need to give people the tools. We've put some of the tools out on the internet in a system called many eyes. It's a system where we feature many visualizations. Uh, as you can see on this top page of the system, there are a lot of different ways to visualize data. We've provided tools for many kinds of visualizations from um, uh, stacked uh, histories to bubble charts to um, networks. And people can upload data in any data that's in a spreadsheet form and put it up on the um, internet and see it with a number of kinds of visualizations. Um, this is an example of the kind of thing you might expect people to do, finding publicly available data, largely numerical. This is US government expenses over a certain period of time. You can play with this. And most importantly is that when somebody finds something interesting, they could save the visualization in that state, comment on it, ask a question about it. This is a question about why there's a spike. And other people have answered it. Somebody who comes along and sees this question can also click on this visualization and be back in the same place can continue to use it to interact with it and, and change it and try to understand some other things. But all the visualizations can be saved at any state and still can be active. So that's the, the first thing that we kind of expected to have happen here. There have been some surprises, though, as well. Once we give people the tools, we find surprising uses. So one of the surprises, and this happens when you put something on the internet, put it in the blogosphere, something you all uh, know about, I'm sure, at a Web 2.0 conference is that there will be surprising uses. So this was both a surprising domain to us, and but a typical pattern we discovered kept happening with a lot of kinds of um, data. So this was a user named Crossway uploaded uh, co-occurrence data for the Bible, for biblical features, to many eyes. And then after uploading that data, visualized it as a social network. These are people who presumably knew each other. Um, but then took this to a religious blog site. So we made it very easy for people to take any visualization to their own blog. So we enabled this. But again, a little bit surprising, there were hundreds of, um, or almost 100 by Google account, of blogs that, that um, have communities around them on these um, biblical issues. And this got discussed across a number of blogs eventually leading somebody to a new insight that they took back to many eyes, visualized, and brought back into their blog. So we put a lot of community features into many eyes, wanting to build a community there. But what seems to be even more important is that with these tools that enable visualization, we actually enable people to have deeper discussions in their own communities. Finally, the final surprise was how much people started to try to use our tools, the visualizations that we did provide originally, to analyze words, just putting up uh, you know, text of a whole novel or plays or, or, and so on. 
And that became so interesting to our community um, that we have actually added many visualizations to the site and find that word visualizations is, is a particularly interesting and exciting direction to go with this work. So just as a few examples, my apologies to Ariadne, or Ariane for giving um, uh, more airtime to Sarah Palin, but this is Sarah Palin's acceptance speech as a word map. So the biggest words are the ones that were said the most often in her speech, and they're mapped out with something called Wordle, so they were in a, a kind of artful um, layout. It's not really surprising that McCain in America would be big on this. It might be a little surprising that man is so big and you actually can't find woman in the set of words here. <laughs> Draw whatever. Comparative word uh, maps. This is more like a, a tag cloud. And this is comparing uh, Obama and McCain speeches. And particularly, you could see um, the, the sort of biggest words, or nearly biggest, in each color orange for Obama and blue for McCain, there's promise here and fight. We have a whole uh, uh, area of the site on political um, uh, speech analysis, and obviously it, it spikes every time there are interesting things like conventions. Um, this was former Attorney General Gonzalez testifying to, yeah, okay. <laughs> we love this one. So this is why I did insist on having my hands on the computer. I wanted to make sure you saw something live here. So I do have this visualization live for you. Um, I put it on my machine. It's a good thing. I understand I couldn't have been on the internet here. I don't recall. So we have this. You can see he doesn't even recall remembering certain things. I don't recall. But this is just to give you, just to give you a sense of how dynamic all of these visualizations are very dynamic. And, and we know that that draws people in and uh, leads to new insight. So I'll give you the URL on the last slide so you'll know how to go do this yourselves. Um, so finally, what have we learned at IBM Research from doing this experiment? What we've found from many eyes and a number of other projects that we call venture research is that you really need to be out there with scalable real-world uh, deployments to keep up with the wisdom of crowds, and, and frankly, for this audience, to keep up with all the little Web 2.0 companies out there. It's really hard to claim uh, the high ground as researchers doing science when there's so much exciting experimentation going on in the world, and um, we, we have to make sure we're a part of that. What's more, to, do, to take that high ground and to be able to do research on things like what leads to viral adoption, what are the kind of adoption paths you want to see if you're trying to understand that you will take off, what are the things that are exciting on the web that don't necessarily look like they have business impact, but when you bring them into a big company like IBM and, and use IBM as if it were the internet, um, what will take off? Will these things have business value? If you ask people to use their real names in the system, will you still get viral takeoff? All those kinds of questions depend on doing scalable, real deployments. And they do have a feeling of a business venture because we continually have questions and decision points just like a venture firm might. We, have, we want to study people doing real work and therefore need to encourage them to do real work and support them doing real work. And so we have the tension that um, a product group would have of trying to keep their user base happy while trying to innovate. So it's a challenging form of research. And we have just announced this week a new center for social software based in Cambridge, but drawing on uh, worldwide research and across our business divisions to make sure that we can do this research in a responsible way, providing real work business environments to people, stable enough but innovative enough for us to continue to learn and do research. We'll be very open with our data with academics and are inviting people from other businesses in to work with us on site in a corporate residency program. So finally, manyeyes.com is at the first URL, and more information about our social software center is at the second. Thank you.